Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going with yet again part 12 of plasma controllers built incorrectly. Uh, this video, I really don't know what to say to introduce it. I really want you all to see this because, yes, it is from YouTube. And believe it or not, this individual made not one, but two videos. And again, you have to see it for yourself. Let's jump right in. We've been doing some test cuts and uh, having some trouble with programs going awry. It uh, sometimes drops out communication with the SD card. Try to lap tap. That didn't work very good. So I'll show you what we got going on. Okay, guys, I wanted to do this video because I've had a lot of potential and past clients ask me about what have I seen with systems and again to actually explain it is not always easy to do in this case it's pretty easy to see that this individual wraps stepper leads in tinfoil now just so everyone is on the same page I have been asked before if this is something that can be done to work as shielding here's the the honest answer you can use foil it is used to mitigate EMI. The problem with using tin foil is the fact that it's not properly ground drained. You don't see any grounds coming from that. And nor is it going to be durable enough to actually be over sustained use with a robot. Okay. Once again, understanding proper application and they use mylar foil inside of shielded cables because of its flexibility and its nature for being conductive. What you're doing here is essentially just jerry-rigging your system. We also see a piece of wood that he's using as a support, which I don't know why you'd be doing that or 3D printing linear parts if you're planning on having a precision robot. But once again, I wanted to show this video from the beginning so you guys can see what questions I'm usually asked. And you're probably saying the same thing. Why would he actually post this? Then uh, we'll talk about what we're going to do about it. Thanks for watching. Take two. Okay, just so everyone's on the same page, basically what we're watching him do is test the robot for stability. Let's pay attention. I really want to hear in the comments how many of you think he's writing down and documenting what he's actually seeing with his table. The reason I always recommend any client or potential client who's having issues with his table to document and actually perform a troubleshooting process is so that you're not chasing your tail. If you don't write it down, you're probably going to forget it, especially if you're frustrated and you find that you have a client's work on the table, which again, usually happens at the worst possible time. This is what delays most guys from actually figuring out and learning their robot. What they end up doing, once again, is just watching it do the same thing over and over. And unfortunately, we know that if you're doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result, guys, that's a definition of insanity. I'm really curious on how effective you think this type of learning would be, especially considering he's basically destroying his raw material. Because if he's not getting a proper cut, then of course this is not going to be a piece that he can resell. It becomes sacrificial. So how much time do you think is acceptable? And I'm asking everybody this for whatever you consider yourself, whether it be a professional, whether 
be a hobbyist, which I don't know many hobbyists running plasma robots because they are the most expensive genre right now going. Damn it. I think that's an almost. Almost there. So, last cut I did, I lost steps. Like a lot of steps. It was really bad. So, I didn't know if it was the machine, like after it ran for like three minutes or something, if it started screwing up or what. But. This thing has been running, I think, here for, well, 16 minutes. Going up and down and around, cutting holes. Go ahead and rewind that back a little bit and listen to the linearity of his axis, guys. Does that even sound right? I mean, just listening to that. Many of you are just cringing probably watching this, but many of you who are novice, listen to the linearity of your axis. If it does not sound like a robot, and you can... Once again, use Google and YouTube to see what they should sound like. If you hear any type of friction, it's not right, guys. But without the plasma running, just to see what's what. So, this is going okay. So, definitely need to figure out more shielding. Because I drew a mark and I haven't lost any, any steps. This thing's moving right along. I really don't believe after watching all of the CNC fail videos, especially on plasmas, that I would even have to explain a controller like this. Um, I have no idea why this end user deems it necessary to show this, um, other than to say this is what not to do, guys. You can see this is really a mess, and in essence, to have any form of stability, because I can attest to the fact that I believe he's using a USB input there, uh, this is a complete mistake for any type of plasma robot, let alone be it a CNC. Okay guys, just a brief introduction about what you're going to see. Um, this end user did a second portion of the video where he's going in and trying to rectify the EMI issues he's had with his robot. Now my veteran guys out there are going to be shaking their head in disbelief. I know I was when I first seen this part of the uh, video. But keep in mind, my novice guys, if you do not come to me, make sure you find a qualified robotics vendor who understands the components they're selling and can really teach you what you need to understand. This is not best practice and Keep in mind, you've been warned. I do not understand why this individual would post a video like this other than he really has no other content. And that's really sad because I'm sure he has some skills that can be monetized in a way that he does show he understands what he's doing. Anyway, I've been running into some problems and I, I thought it was shielding, which I might still have some shielding trouble. Or... I believe we all know he has shielding issues, guys. The machine keeps taking off in random directions. It kind of picks back up where it left off. And I came across the, somebody else asking about the same problem on the forum. It seemed like when their step remote wires were too close to the ribbon, uh, they were getting some random stuff happening. You're printing off the card. So. 
you really have to wonder where he came up with the solution that it was the ribbon cables and wires being too close. We keep reading that same redundant stuff all over the internet for some reason that they feel if we separate signal leads from power leads, that is equivalent to the proper double shielded cable required for these robots. I have no idea where this came from, but I'm going to tell you right now, rather than go down the road of being lucky, just do it right the first time, guys. My, my case is pretty tight. And they're real close together, so I think we're going to spread that stuff out. I also did some shielding. Let's all just take a moment and take in what we're seeing. Because I know many of you, like I said, are going to be amazed by just looking at this. Yeah, I just covered that cable with foil to the plasma. And then I did the Z and X axis wires and I shielded that in foil and it's all grounded back to case. These wires, even when stuff is bolted in, are right up against that. So I thought either I had a bad board for the drivers. Okay, so let's look at this carefully, guys. Rather than save your money to do it correctly, if you don't have the funds, you basically go and jerry-rig some contraption you've built and hope, number one, it doesn't start a fire. Number two, that you don't hurt yourself with electricity. And number three, let's then get done with this and then post a video on YouTube to hopefully convince others that you either know what you're doing or you know how to solve some sort of issue. I'll let you guys be the judge to that. Or the Arduino board was bad. I wasn't sure which, but... Did you hear Arduino board, guys? You're seeing a little consistency in my videos, I'm sure. We're going to spread some stuff out in a computer case I got from school. See if that helps us out at all. Just so everyone's aware, this is a 3D printer controller that he's tied to an Arduino, I believe. Um, guys, once again, in best practice, Arduinos are USB. They are not designed for CNC robotics use. Henceforth, everything I've discussed in previous videos about CNC controller failures dealing with Arduinos, you're seeing it again. Now it's out of the end user's mouth. Buyer beware of anything dealing with Arduino if you're buying from a vendor. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. Just in case uh, your electronics case is the same model as mine, there's uh, two slots at the bottom. You just loosen those ones and three screws at the top you gotta pull out. I don't know if this power supply works. I think you connect that green wire with the black wire next to it. Guys, I believe he's using a jumper to test the power supply. I really do not recommend anyone using a PC power supply for this application as once again, it is not designed for it. And therefore, it would eliminate you having to test a power supply that's on where you're guessing if that jumper will be successful in actually turning on the unit. If it doesn't, God forbid you get a short, you could get shocked. There's no reason to risk your life or anyone else's just because you want to get your system done. Once again, guys, if you can't afford the right components, wait until you can save and do it right. <laughs> well, she works. 11 volts. Once again, we can see the culprit. We are using USB, and if you guys see any of my previous videos, you realize that USB, again, using 5 volts, it's an unstable voltage, especially around a plasma cutter where we're drawing massive amounts of amps. USB should not be used for CNC. Some of this down. So I tried running this, and I can't get the X axis to jog. It just kind of vibrates. I had somebody else tell me when that happens to them, they're having connection problems. And I 
I always wonder when I hear when people say that someone told them that it would be this and they never really cover and define who that someone is because they don't know who that someone is. I've said this in previous videos guys, be careful of forums and guidance followed on forums. Most of the misinformation you find is on forums. And unfortunately, until more of the end users that are building their own systems understand that, then what ends up happening is usually they spend more time, more money, and they put themselves and their family at risk. Be careful. Got an eight pin connector here. Uh, <clears throat> I wonder if that's the problem or it's one of the other connections in this whole mess, but I'm gonna separate it out of here. Run a new cable. I'm just going to go ahead and run a new cable. You could just try and re-solder all your connections. And, I don't know. I'm just going to hmm, I'm gonna snip it off. And just for the x-axis, I was having some trouble with it moving. Of course. Anyway, I ended up changing out the cable for this one. Either had a bad connection in these El Cheapo Chinese connectors. I know like many of you, I always find it extremely interesting when someone points out that they feel a connector or some other component is made inferiorly, yet we're looking at an individual who zip-tied aluminum foil to a GX16 connector. Is that logical? Or I had a bad soldered connection somewhere. I just snipped it off and put this new one on. I'll put a connector on here. I'm going to do some testing first. At least if your fan's noisy, you know it's working. Off she goes. I put a dwell at the bottom. It dwells at Z0 and then pierces. Hopefully it keeps me from losing steps. Well, it did that okay. Step one. This is the first test with the plasma cutter and the new setup. We'll see what happens. Well, that didn't get us very far. Okay, guys, that wraps up part 12. And once again, I want to thank you all for your support. To my novice guys out there, please do it right the first time. And if you don't have the money and you need the knowledge, save your money. Get directed by someone who is competent in the field of CNC robotics, if it isn't myself, and make sure you do your due diligence. Thank you all.